Hello, hello, ladies and gents, on this beautiful Sunday night. It's 11.04 p.m. in Panama right now. And agency vlog number three. So if you haven't seen the previous couple agency vlogs, haven't done one in a long time, the purpose of this playlist or style of video is really just talk about life in general um, and the agency because it's all intertwined. So a little bit of personal life and agency life things going on and uh, pretty much like a behind the scenes rambly style content of major realizations. I, I plan to do these maybe once a week but it's probably just going to occur when I feel called to do them. Right now I feel called to do it. So um, nine things on the board here. Let's actually start with number five, environment optimizations. So December 9th, I left Panama City and uh, moved to the beach in Panama, a place called Playa Venal. It's a very small place. If you were to come here, you would easily be able to find me in a matter of days because it's a very small place. There's like probably less than a thousand people that live here. Um, and it is beautiful. Wow. I was a little bit nervous to leave the city given I had lived in Panama City for five years, but this optimization, environmental optimization shift, I felt would be dramatically better for my overall happiness. I was correct, fortunately. <laughs> I figured there was maybe a 20% chance that it, I would be wrong. Um, now, having lived here since December 9th, what is that, roughly four months, something like this? Um, wow, it's been absolutely beautiful. Like, I can't even begin to describe how happy, how much happier I am. And so you've probably heard me talk about environmental optimizations. And these are things that you can do to make your environment better, to make you happier. And so for me, I lived in the city before. It's like a concrete jungle. There's no beach anywhere near the city that's nice. Um, the closest beach that you can go surfing to is like an hour and a half drive. And I really moved to Panama for surfing uh, and just great weather and like beach and nature. And what's crazy is I got to Panama and just like lived in downtown Panama City and like worked relentless hours for like four or five years and like rarely ever saw the beach and rarely ever left my apartment. Um, which is fine. I don't regret it. It was a beautiful time period in my life and I'm super happy about it occurring. It's just like, wow, this actually is way better. I'm so happy I found it. I was also very blessed because I wouldn't have been able to come here with the level of comfort that I have without the agency Better AMS. Like, there's no way I would, would have been able to purchase this house. So, huge thanks to Better AMS. Um, and what really shifted for me, there's a few things. Sundays. I don't work Sundays. Like today I didn't work. This is still a little bit of work because I'm making a video, but I want to do like a video a day on YouTube. So that's kind of why I'm trying to see if I can do that for like a year. And uh, Sundays are the day I don't take, is the day I take off. Now I was reading this good book. Um, my friend Matt wrote it. It's right here. It's not a very popular book. Um, even though it's forwarded by Dave Asprey, founder of... Uh, Dave Asprey. I can't remember what he's the founder of, but it's like Coffee Bullet or something like this. It's literally the most biggest brand ever in terms of like the biohacking world. Uh, so great book. In the book, he talks about how your days off should be like legendary days where you're just like so excited. You had an amazing day, like full disconnect and 10 out of 10 happiness and like vibes, like you loved it. So in the city, when I was in the city, Sundays were like, okay, I'm not working, I'm chilling in the apartment, maybe I'll go see a movie, maybe I'll go to a restaurant, maybe I'll drive around the city. That's about it. There was nothing I really loved about the city. What I, Everything I truly loved that would allow me to have like an epic day off was like nature and surfing, being in the water. So now that I'm here and I can do that, wow, huge shift and happiness just dramatically increased. And it took me just like kind of stepping back and thinking like, okay, wow, um, I don't need a thousand megabytes per second in terms of internet speed. I can do it with 50. And that was a preconceived notion for me that like, no, I need a thousand. Like I can't work without a thousand. A ridiculously, a ridiculous pre preconceived notion. So now I have about 50. 
It's great. I'll, I'll, so I'll soon have 100. They're, they're installing fiber optic. And other things, I don't know why it didn't occur sooner. I, it just occurred when it did, which is fine. But um, I wish I probably, like, if I could go back in time and talk to, you know, 19-year-old Taylor who's moving to Panama, I would say, hey, the city's great. You know, you know, stay here for maybe a year or two. But then get out of here and go live somewhere where you're actually going to be able to have a legendary day off and be able to disconnect and be probably a lot happier, which is somewhere on the beach. And there's a lot of really good places to live um, in Panama that are near a surfing spot. So huge environment shift, super excited about that. Absolutely amazing. Um, other things that have occurred since I've left the city. Um, I'm going to go through the personal stuff first, and then we'll get into the agency stuff. Probably should have said that at the beginning of this video for those of you who are waiting for the agency updates. We'll get there. Um, heart expansions. Wow. I, I, I mean, yeah, I don't really know how to explain this. It's just kind of, I guess you could say it's a spiritual thing. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but just major expansions and opening in my heart, um, which ties into having a lot more feminine energy. I was used, I was for a long time predominantly extremely masculine and now have a much more balance, a much better balance of feminine and masculine energy and amazing, absolutely beautiful. Like I love where, how I'm feeling right now in terms of just my feelings. Um, I feel a lot more, I'm a lot more intuitive now and definitely pick up on other people's emotions like a lot more, which is kind of freak, kind of freaks me out sometimes. Like if someone's like really angry, I can like feel it. It's a dense energy. And if someone's like really sad, it's like, oh man, I can feel it. <laughs> Whereas before, like that stuff just, I never picked up on any of it. I never, I never tuned into it whatsoever. So that's really cool. Um, great feelings there, loving that and just working on continuing to improve the balance I don't know where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm pretty even. So those are all great. Uh, relationship shifts, this is the last personal point. Um, we shifted our relationship, myself and Nicole. I made a video actually with her about our relationship, uh, relationship lessons. And we shifted from being romantic lovers to best friends. <laughs> and... Um, we shifted for a lot of different reasons, but primarily one or two. One being that she, um, it was really in her highest and best interest to pursue, you know, being independent and like also just traveling. She really wanted to travel. She's lived in Panama her whole life. And so she wanted to travel a lot um, and just like experience like kind of like more of a nomadic lifestyle and, you know, never know what's going to happen, like wake up here, wake up over there in a different city, or like, I don't know where I'm going to stay next. And I really don't like that. For me, I love having my HQ, my house, my setup, my desktop. I know, I mean, I'm going to be here, you know, 80, 90% of the year. And I'm, I'm super happy about that. Um, that I really love. And so I didn't want that nomadic lifestyle. So that was one reason. And it finally got to the point where it's like, She's like, I really want to do this. I can't stay in Panama. I can't do this anymore. Like, it's, it's too much for me. I'm, okay, great. I want you to be happy. You should go travel and do your thing. And um, the other reason was, uh, yeah, it was just we both felt that, like, we would be better off. Uh, we would both evolve faster and have greater personal development if we weren't together, romantically speaking, and if we were just friends. And we were both correct in our hypothesis and there's been ridiculous growth in terms of, I guess you could say spiritual growth. Like I was way more masculine before I'm a lot more feminine now. Like it's, it's a, it's a balance. And a lot of that, it was able to occur because I was no longer in that relationship. Um, and there was things about being in that relationship, but also about being in the city in general that were limiting me from, I think, expanding. So that's beautiful. I'm super happy about that. Wow. Uh, there was a lot of also, things that came up and arose uh, in terms of having been in a relationship for like three, four years, whatever it was. And then, you know, now not being in one, it's, it was interesting. There's definitely feelings of loneliness that came up um, that had to be, had to, had to be integrated and worked through. 
And then also just like weird things of like social anxieties about moving to a brand new place and not knowing really anybody or having any friends and having to make new friends. And, you know, like when you're in a relationship, it's really easy to just work and never go hang out with anybody and not have any friends because you have this person that you really love. And so for me, that's kind of how I was for the last three, four years. Like I'm pretty much never hang out with anybody, like very rarely. And, um, because I had my best friend who lived with me, right? So there's no need to go out and I'm like laser focused. I want to work. I, just, I really care about my work. I love my work. This is what I want to do. So no longer having that person in the house was like, whoo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, definitely impacted my productivity for a period of time. Uh, it wasn't like crazy. Like I was still able to work. It was just like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. was difficult. I'd say like around 6 p.m. I was like, okay, I need to go and see some humans because it's getting a little bit intense not seeing anybody or talking or interacting with anybody. So yeah, there was some major shifts and upgrades and downloads and uh, integrations during uh, the first couple months of few months after the departure of us being romantically together and now just being best friends. So, uh, let's get into the agency stuff. Cleaning up my room is tied to the agency, but I just made a video on that. So maybe I shouldn't start there. I'll maybe do that last. Taking on investors. We're debating on taking on investors in better EMS quite seriously. Um, we met a couple of guys that are like, wow, their track record's really cool. They have a really strong track record of investing in agencies that have between, I think, like 30 to 50 employees or something like this and helping them scale to over, you know, hundreds of employees, in some cases, thousand plus employees. And they just have a really good track record and they're looking for a minority stake in, in, a, in a company, in, in agencies, that's what they do. They, they look for mi minority stakes in companies to where they can be a non-operative partner meaning they're basically like a silent investor, so to speak. They don't actually do anything in the business. They just invest. And I imagine there's like a consulting call with them where they give us advice once a quarter or something like that. So we haven't worked out the exact details, but we had a couple calls with them. That was really great. So stoked about that. And I think that taking on investors, well, uh, there's probably a lot of second order consequences to such a thing, but first to give greater context, it would be a minority stake, 10, 20% at most. I prefer if it was just 10%, um, because we don't need the capital. It would be really nice to have the capital, but what is actually most desired is the, 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 the knowledge and the just having advisors on the board that have been where we are and gone way further than we are right and that can say hey you're here but like to get to 500 employees like you're gonna need to do this this and this or like you're currently doing that and you should be doing this so we're looking for that strategic insights really I, for, for, my, for me primarily the cash would be nice but um the strategic insights would be better having a strategic partner so that's really exciting super stoked about that that's for agent that's for better ams not agency enlightened leadership alignment um Wow, this is a great topic. Never would I have foresaw, uh, you know, alignment amongst leadership being an issue. But yeah, we've we've kind of gone back and forth over the couple of years now. It's been a couple of years, maybe a few years, and we've constantly been like realigning, 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 and trying to like gain alignment. And I, I don't think this is ever going to be a process that ends. I think alignment is constantly occurring and by that i mean like you know we have three people in leadership and we all want to make sure we're on the same page and we have the same ideas the vision that we're trying to achieve and we have clarity around what each of us is going to be doing and naturally being in a business which operates on a planet which has systems like political systems and financial systems things are always changing <laughs> And um, with things always being changing, you're always constantly realigning. So that's what I mean by realigning. Um, and right now, I think uh, there's pretty strong clarity on Destiny's role and Alex's role. And now it's kind of like the thing that's just being re been realigning, trying to figure out is my role in the company and uh, where I can contribute the most. 
to make sure that, you know, the salary that I'm paying myself isn't just a salary that's going to nothing. It's like there's actually some, you know, value being put into the company that um, ideally is worth much more than the salary that I'm paying myself. And so trying to figure that out has been interesting over the last couple of weeks. We just had a lot of conversations with Destiny and Alex and just kind of gain clarity there. And it's also a little bit more complicated now because we've launched Agency Enlightened. And so putting time into Agency Enlightened and not having 100% of my time into Better AMS now um, is where we're, we're just trying to figure out alignment. So that's uh, been been interesting. And I think it's I just never would have foresaw it. It's, it's really interesting. It's really cool. I, I think that there's something beautiful about building a company to where you no long, you could die and the company would be perfect without you. Like you're no longer that pivotal. You're no longer that crucial person that is needed. And that's kind of where I'm at with better AMS is like, I'm no longer that person that is, if I died, the company would die. It's, it's primarily destiny is that person. Um, Alex really important to the company and there's just like a lot that he does that is like glue to the company it's kind of the best way that we've figured out how to describe it um, like he does one-on-ones he does he looks over a lot of the finance he's like a really good like he knows a lot about everything in the company like almost like a general manager but he's the COO and uh, he talks to all the people and makes sure that they're heard and takes care of salaries and um, he's amazing like w- without him if I died and he died, Destiny would be fucked. <laughs> it would be really hard on Dest. But uh, no, like I could die and the company would be fine. And if Alex died, I'd have to take over his stuff and you know, I could do that. I wouldn't love it because that's not what I love doing, but uh, it'd be okay. And it'd be hard to find somebody and replace him because Destiny really likes him and they have, they have a great relationship, which is really beautiful. And I think that's needed between like a CEO and a CEO. So... But but Destiny is um, CEO of Better AMS and plays a crucial role because she's pretty much also like CMO. Like she's the one who's like the face of the brand and does a lot of the content and brings in a lot of the big deals for the agency. Um, and so that is the lifeblood of the, any agency, sales and market, like sales. The ability to close deals is the lifeblood of any agency. And she's also marketing. <laughs> so... I remember when I was that person and it's like when you don't have a marketing department and a sales department and you just have one person doing basically both of those things. Like we do have another person, Better AMS, who's now doing sales calls. Um, We actually have two other people, but like nobody is really at the level in terms of like thought leadership and platform and personal brand that, that Destiny's at. And so she's the one who really brings in a lot of the leads and speaks on a lot of podcasts. So that makes her that person that like, she's basically like a strong bottleneck in the agency. If she was to die, it'd be really detrimental. Um, so anyways, with that, it comes this funny like thing where like, cool, you started this company, but now you have two other partners who can run it without you perfectly and um it's like holy shit (laughs) like like wow uh this is great but also because of that uh there then becomes this issue of like oh are you like really like needed and if you are needed what can you do um so, so like that's kind of where things are coming out right now like in terms of just like my title and what we've tried to identify it to be, it's like founder. Um, so I used to be CEO, I used to be COO, and now it's just founder um, because I hop around in a lot of different areas. So it's been really interesting, I, I, really interesting process. I'm really happy about how it's been going. Um, I've learned a lot and continuing to learn a lot. And now I'm, I, I feel really good about where I'm at right now, but just still constantly trying to maintain a good communication line between myself and then the rest of leadership to just ensure that whatever I'm doing is and putting my time and energy into is in fact the best thing that I can be putting my time and energy into so it brings out the highest ROI for better AMS. So leadership alignment is great. Um, Agency enlightened vision. Hmm. Yeah, so agency enlightened launched 
earlier last month, it launched actually the day we had the webinar. The webinar is pinned to the YouTube channel. It's the featured video on the channel. So in case this is your first time hearing of it, you can check out that webinar and learn about agency and Lightning or just go to our website. But what I want to talk about is the vision. So there's a lot of agencies in this world that sadly run in a toxic way. Um, whether it's just due to the fact that they take on a lot of non-ideal clients and they churn heavily through clients. And um, that sucks because they know willingly that they're going to take on this client and likely churn through them if they have a 60% churn rate um, or 50% churn rate, which is quite common. And same thing with like their talent is like they hire somebody and that person leaves in like six months. They have like a six month turnaround a turnover time for like talent. Um, agencies are quite... Uh, commonly known to overwork people, overpromise clients, underdeliver to clients, and there's a whole like meme world about agency life and how terrible it is and how it's so great when you leave an agency and you go work for the client and you're on the brand side and you're in house and you're no longer with an agency. It's like life is so much better on the other side, and I, it's it it's like that's so not true. There are agencies out there that are higher conscious and are doing it the right way. And they can be beautiful companies to be a part of. Um, and so that's really the vision for Agency Enlightened is like, hey, I want to help impact the industry and leave an impact and, and, and help convert, you know, this idea that agencies are toxic into like, no, agencies aren't. They're amazing types of company to work with and um, just help enlighten more agencies and in the process like help them grow a lot and a lot faster because if you're running a company in a pretty toxic way which most companies are all those things i just mentioned are detrimental to your growth and your ability to sell the company and your ability to be happy while working in the company and your ability for you to serve anybody, whether it be in-house or outside of your house, like like in-house is in talent and, and 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 clients, like it's like it sucks. Um, and I've been there in the early stages of running Better AMS when it was this very very small operation. Like I had no vision, I had no mission. It was just like a lifestyle business, which isn't necessarily toxic if you just define your company as a lifestyle business, but like as it grows, if it continues to be a lifestyle company and there's no vision or mission and there's not really you know, much of a culture, well, that's not really ideal and that sucks. And there's gonna be people that are likely to leave very quickly and um, it's just less ideal. So Agency Enlightened, I'm stoked. It's a program that comes with 12 months of coaching. We initially launched it with 18, but we changed it to 12. Um, and yeah, it goes through all the different sectors of like fundamentals, marketing, sales, operations, HR, finance. The five, maybe six things, like sectors of your agency that you need to have a good pulse on. I want to help a lot of people, as many people as possible. Um, it's probably quite obvious that I care, considering I've been putting out content on YouTube for a couple years and haven't sold anything um, but just have still continued to put out content. And part of that is because like, I know that it's going to help when I launch Agency Enlightened, but like two years went by, I was like, eh, that's a lot of time to just put out, put energy into content and not, you know, make any profit out of it. So what I'm trying to get at there is like, yeah, I don't, I don't really care too much about the money. Um, money's great. It's beautiful. It's a necessity in business. It helps you grow and helps you maintain employees and whatever. And, and, it's, it's, it also gives you a lot of financial freedom, which is cool. So there's a lot of benefits to it. But um, I, I really care more about leaving a mark on the industry and knowing that like, okay, this is the blueprint that I wish I had when I was starting my agency. And it would have been way smoother in terms of growth. It would have been way better. Um, I, I just would have been a lot happier in my life in general too. Like a lot of, uh, there's, there's a couple of modules in the agency line where I talk about mindset. And oh man, if I had that when I was 19, <laughs> and if I took it seriously, I don't know where I'd be. Obviously things have worked out the way they worked out for good reasons, but yeah, it's the blueprint I wish I had. I want to launch a mastermind at some point once there's enough members in Agency Enlightened, I don't know, maybe like 50 or 
100 members or something like this. And if Agency Enlightened grows into something that's producing a significant amount of revenue, I should say profit, um, which it has uh, the capacity to do. I mean, the, the, these types of businesses, these, I guess you could say, coaching or info product businesses have quite ridiculous margins if, if you can uh, figure out the acquisition of the customer. Um, if you can crack the code on getting a reasonable cost per acquisition. Uh, but what I would like to do is kind of like make the Y Combinator of, of, of agency. So Y Combinator is like a platform where SaaS entrepreneurs, so software as a service entrepreneurs that, that build software can go. To, it's almost like an accelerator or an incubator and they can become part of Y Combinator and then get all the advisors they need and also get the funds they need if they need to raise money because there's a ton of, there's a large pool of investors that are part of Y Combinator that, um, you know, invest in companies that, and there's a heavy vetting process for getting into Y Combinator, yada, yada, yada. So the Y Combinator, but for agencies, this is like, I'm like, oh man, that would be so beautiful. It'd be so cool. There's nothing really like that. Um, and Y Combinator has left a really beautiful impact on like uh, the entrepreneurial community and the SaaS world. And I'm just like, why is this, doesn't this exist for agencies, you know, like service-based businesses that are digital? Um, so that's really exciting. I'm really excited to, one, hopefully launch a mastermind um, this or next year. And two, begin to, you know, like have the ability to bring together a great community in which we can help early stage startup agency owners get the advice advisors and potentially funding they need to help them grow their agency and in a high conscious way you know this would be part of agency enlightened basically so uh that's really exciting It'd be really cool to take the profits from agency enlightened and kind of angel invest into other agencies and also build a community where other investors can be angel investors and advisors etc cetera, etc cetera. Stoked about that. Really stoked about that. <sighs> Cleaning up my room. I made a video about this topic, so I won't go too deep on it. If you want to check it out, check it out. There's a good philosophy by, by Jordan Peterson. I've I, I, I've heard of it for so long and um, never really took it seriously for some reason. And then I was like, I want to try this. So I just made my room better. Like it's already quite clean. I also have somebody that comes to the house and helps clean the house a few days a week. So I don't really need to put too much effort into cleaning the house because it's already done for me, which is a nice life hack in terms of keeping your house clean. Uh, but like I did some stuff to make it more beautiful. And the concept is simple. The, the room is a representation of you. It's not your room. Like it's not a bedroom. It's a representation of your mind. It, it's you externalized into the physical world. It's, it, so if you make the room better, it's almost like you've made yourself better because that room is you. It's not separate from you. It is you. It's a representation of your mind, right? If you walk in your friend's room and it's f super messy, it's clothes everywhere, there's food on the floor, you know, there's just, it's just disarray and chaos. Well, what do you think is going on in that person's mind? It's that that's what that person's mind looks like. And so, yeah, my room is already quite clean, but there's just things that I've been looking at in my room. Like, okay, I can make that better. I can make that better. But like months have gone by and I haven't really made it better and I haven't put the time into it. I was like, okay, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to schedule some time off. It took like an hour, two hours, made it way better. And then what happened was interesting because you now changed the environment of this space, which is this like point in space that you control it's your room um everything else it like becomes glaringly obvious to you as to what is not beautiful and what is ugly if you were to call it that um because now you have this new standard this new level of like beauty that that, that is your reality but it's only this one section of your world which is your room and so if you if you don't like live with your parents and it's your house let's say uh, and then you leave your room and you go to your bathroom and the bathroom 
you're like you walk in the bathroom and after cleaning your room and making it more beautiful and you're just like oh my god this bathroom is it's nowhere near what what the room is i need to make this better and then you go into your kitchen same thing in your living room and so it's just like this crazy domino effect where the second order consequences are so beautiful and and great that you just start cleaning and beautifying everything and it even transcends the physical domain it goes into like it goes into like your computer and your files and your bookmarks and everything like your mind you know you're just like okay i want to like take care of everything i want to organize the food that i'm eating and want it to be healthier like it's crazy i can't even begin to describe the domino effect that occurs so i recommend checking that video out and watching the jordan peterson video that i linked in the description of it it's great Without further ado, ladies and gents, that is all I have. So, hefty vlog three rant, 11.34 p.m. Gonna get some sleep. Love you all, and yes, thanks for tuning in. I'll try to do these maybe once a week, but no promises. Ciao.